I did my white paper on the role of brick and mortar stores in an increasingly virtual world. Uh, and the inspiration for this what came from when I was growing up. I loved going to retail stores and experiencing the brand live. Uh, and as in the last 10 years, retailers are shuttering their stores, I wondered, is the brick and mortar store um, a dying breed? And if so, if not, uh, what role does it play going forward? So I put up some headlines and quotes to sort of set the scene. The first two talk about how Borders shuttered in uh, 2011 and Radio Shack filed for bankruptcy earlier this year. Um, and in just th the first half of this year, there have been a wave of store closings. And so the, the next one is a Forbes headline saying that you know this wave will reshape retail landscape uh, and also notes that new online startups are taking over some of these physical location. So that's kind of interesting. And the last is a quote from Mark Andreessen, who's um, from the venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz, and he and from 2013. And he's predicting that there's going to be the death of retail. Uh, and that's because software will eat retail and uh, e-commerce will trump. So if you're a traditional retailer, you're looking at all this, you're like, oh, you know, these brick and mortar stores are closing and these e-commerce startups are getting so much press, and this venture capitalist is like, the death of retail, what am I supposed to do? Uh, and so what should traditional retailers do? The first is they should recognize that shoppers' expectations have changed and will continue to change. Uh, so uh, shoppers expect to be able to see in-store inventory online. They also expect to be able to buy, pick up, and return across all channels. Uh, on the other hand, retailers have been really slow to adapt. Mm -hmm. Uh, only a third of retailers have begun to operationalize the basics, and so that includes uh, cross-channel inventory visibility and store fulfillment. Um, and only 6% have reported no significant barriers to integrating all of these channels. So the next is, as a traditional retailer, you should recognize that some of this death of the brick-and-mortar store is a bit overblown. So uh, physical stores are still where the majority, the vast majority of shopping occurs today. Um, in 2013, only 5% of total US retail sales was transacted with pure play, meaning online only players. So 95% of retail sales transacted with um, uh, retailers with physical stores. Uh, and so it's clear that there is still um, value in the retail store today. Shoppers still prefer um, shopping in-store. Shoppers spend more time and more money in-store than online, and omnichannel retailers enjoy a higher net sales than uh, pure play retailers. And you can see here, part of it is just that if you have stores, um, you're gonna, your customers are going to have more touch points and spend more than if you're just an e-retailer. Uh, and so having established that the brick-and-mortar store has a value today, what about going forward? What about in the future? And so I looked at two case studies um, at pure play retailers that have moved into the offline to see why they're doing this. And the first is Warby Parker. Um, so Warby Parker was uh, founded in 2010. And in 2011, a year later, they started toying with uh, going offline. And since then, they've opened 12 stores. And they're uh, planning to expand to 20 uh, this year. Um, and the stores offer a range of services from eye exams to you get to try on the full line of uh, glasses and they also carry inventory so you c customers can go try them on buy them and take them home that day um, and uh, a warden professor and our own Santiago Galino did a study and saw that cities with Warby Parker showrooms saw a lift of nine percent in total sales as well as three percent in online sales uh, and so these stores are very very um, uh, successful and another metric is that the average store has sales of three thousand dollars per square foot which is only behind Apple uh, and so Neil Blumenthal one of the founders and CEOs says that these stores are um, really a way to have customers live the brand uh, and build brand presence the second case study I did was on Bonobos. So Bonobos was uh, founded in 2007. Uh, it's a, also a pure play retailer, and they were selling better fitting men's bottoms. Uh, and in 2011, they started experimenting with uh, other items, so like tops. 
and th those weren't actually selling as well. And so they started thinking, well, what if we had like areas where people could try them on? And so they started thinking about um, going offline. And as you see on the left, Andy Dunn, the founder and CEO, thought that they would never go offline. They're like, that's a terrible business model. But in 2011, when they started trying this, they saw that the average um, customer spent significantly more at these guide shops than online. And so they currently have 16 guide shops and are um, planning to reach 40 by 2016. And these guide shops are a little bit different. You go and you can try on the full line of clothing, but you don't, there's no inventory. So when customers purchase, they purchase at the guide shops, but will receive the items a few days later in the mail. Uh, Bonobo saw that uh, these guide shops increased their customer lifetime value. And Andy Dunn is now a convert and you know, his quote is, Bonobos won't win because of being e-commerce, but in spite of being e-commerce. So stores are a cost-effective way of building brand and customer lifetime value as seen in those two case studies. Uh, specifically, you know, when traditional retailers are thinking about and comparing themselves against these e-commerce startups, uh, I think they should recognize that these e-commerce players have a high customer acquisition cost which might not be that um, obvious. And they also have low customer loyalty. So um, you know, there might be some buzz about a new online retailer, but those are often flashes in the pan. Uh, and that is why I think Bonobos and Warby Parker are doing such an aggressive push to go into the offline to build a brand and uh, business that is sustainable. So um, having established that retail stores are still important today and going forward, what should traditional retailers do um, to, be, to, to adapt to consumers' new shopping expectations? Uh, and so I have three sort of steps. The first is that they need to garner the buy-in within their organizations that, they're, um, that the customers are actually looking for an omni-channel retailer. The second is uh, being, becoming omni-channel requires new software, and being able to integrate the new software with their old is important. And the last is having an inventory management software that can provide accurate data to both employees and customers. Uh, and so doing this research, I found that there were also some opportunities within the ecosystem for ecosystem players. Uh, and it's basically that the two solutions, um, a solution to integrate legacy and new software and an inventory management solution that uh, provides accurate, up-to-date information across channels doesn't currently exist.